Manage Dictionary features enable you to maintain your personal dictionary, case dictionaries, and job dictionaries. After editing and adding new entries to dictionaries, especially your personal dictionary, you may wish to review these entries for accuracy and or transfer entries from one dictionary to another. In this lesson, we'll learn how to open a dictionary, the various elements of the Manage Dictionary screen, and how to navigate in the Manage Dictionary function. There are several ways to open a dictionary. You can double-click the dictionary you want to open. You can select the specific dictionary you want to open and then click the Manage Dictionary button on the function bar. Or you can click the Manage Dictionary button and then select the dictionary you want to open. Another method is to select a file and then double-click the dictionary subfile in the Job Details window. Or right-click it and select Open. If you prefer menus, you can click File, Open, Dictionary, and then select the type of dictionary you want to open, and then select the specific dictionary. There are also shortcuts to several dictionaries on this toolbar. Let's go ahead and open up the Personal Dictionary. I'll go ahead and click the Open Personal Dictionary icon here. In the next few lessons, we'll learn how to review the entries that were most recently added to this dictionary, check them for accuracy, and learn how to make changes when needed. Before we can do that, we need to take a moment to become familiar with the elements of the Manage Dictionary screen. You can identify which dictionary is currently open by checking the name on the Title Bar and the Function tab. You already know that these are toolbars. However, notice that if I switch to the Manage Job screen, the type and number of buttons available on the various toolbars change. The buttons that display and functions that are available vary depending on which function you're currently using. Manage Dictionary commands can also be invoked by selecting the commands from a menu or by pressing keyboard commands. This is the status bar. Here you can see whether you are seeing a full view, the entire dictionary, or a filtered view, which is when you use a feature that limits the display to only a selected category of entries. You can also see the total number of entries in the dictionary. You can see the number of the entry that the cursor is currently on. As an edit, there is a keyboard map in this function that controls which keys you press to perform commands. If you prefer to press different keys to access dictionary commands, you can modify the default dictionary keyboard map. There are five columns of information available for each dictionary entry. Text, Steno, Modified Date, Usage Count, and Used Date. The Text column contains the text portion of the dictionary entry. The Steno column contains the Steno portion of the dictionary entry. The Modified Date column indicates the date that the entry was added into the dictionary, or if the entry has been changed since it was added, it reflects the date of the last change. The Usage Count column indicates the number of times the entry has been used by the Translate function. The Use Date column indicates the last date that the dictionary entry was used by the Translate function. Notice this symbol in the Text column. This symbol indicates two things. First, because it is in the text column, it indicates that the dictionary is currently sorted in text order versus being sorted in steno order, or by modified date order, or by usage count order, or use date order. Second, when this arrow symbol is pointing up, it shows that the entries are displayed in ascending order, the top of the dictionary beginning with entries with format symbols, conflicts, punctuation, and numbers, and then words and phrases from A to Z at the bottom. If I click the text column header, I change the display to descending order, meaning words and phrases from Z to A are at the top, and then numbers, punctuation, conflicts, and entries beginning with format symbols are at the bottom of the dictionary. Notice that when you change the display order, the cursor does not change position. The cursor remains on the same entry. If you'd like to change the position of the cursor, you can use the same commands as you would use to move the cursor position in Edit. For example, let's say I want to go to the first entry of this new sort order. I'll press Control Home to move to the beginning of the list. Clicking a different column header changes how the information is sorted. For example, if I click the Modified Date column header, the arrow symbol now appears in the Modified Date column, and the dictionary entries are now sorted by the date they were added to the dictionary, or last modified, from oldest to newest. If I click the Modified Date column header again, the display would change to descending order, with the newest entries at the top 
and oldest entries at the bottom. The best sort order for you will be the one that provides you with the information you most need when you are working in your dictionary. You now know how to open a dictionary and should be able to recognize the various elements of the Manage Dictionary screen. You also know how to sort the dictionary entries so that they focus the display of information in a way that is most helpful to you. If you'd like to practice opening a dictionary and changing the display order, go into the training user and follow the directions for Exercise 1 in the Manage Dictionary Practice document.